Hello everyone and welcome to GT Academy 2014. This is round one. We're in a Nissan Leaf and we're, ha we're at Brands Hatch. Just the indie circuit though. We're not on the full circuit. It presents sort of a unique combo really in the fact that we've got a very small track, a small powered car and it's really bringing some really close times. So you know, first to tenth, one tenth. Below that the positions are even closer. There's, pe there's hundreds of people on the same time. So if you can get that 1,000th, 100th or 1,10th then you're going to improve your positions and hopefully this video guide is going to be pretty detailed, you'll be able to understand what you need to do on any one corner in order to get a better advantage. Now to me if you understand what you need to do you can sort of ad adapt it to your own driving style, technique, whatever. So let's talk about a few of the skills I believe you need certainly some of the skills I use on my lap and this lap's a pretty good one it's a 103.127 so if you use some of these skills you should improve your lap time first one is precise steering now you're probably thinking what what why well, why is steering so important when you're racing a race car it's not as important as the Nissan Leaf uh, the reason being is because when you ex sort of like steer in a race car you're carrying far more speed now in a Nissan Leaf going from 40 mile an hour to 80 mile an hour is a very long time if you can have 40.2 mile an hour on a corner rather than 40 by the time you get to the end of the straight that could be 80.6 miles an hour 80.7 miles an hour because you've managed to carry more momentum it's helped you gain more speed down the hill section I don't know that is what helps you now with steering you're now saying how, how does that work well basically imagine you going full throttle in your car, this is a front wheel drive car remember, and then you suddenly lock the wheel. You're just going to get a lot of smoke and the car won't turn. Now think of that as you are trying to accelerate. You can't accelerate as fast as if you are steering less or if you weren't steering at all. Now the reason I now bring that into this time trial is because there's certain corners, Graham Hill Bend especially, where you need to be precise on the steering in order to get the maximum acceleration out and get a better speed by the end of the straight. Same at Clearway, same at Graham Hill Bend, you're going to have to maintain very good precise steering. Throttle application is also very important. The fact that you should be able to or need to be able to do lift off oversteer and understand how you do that at any given moment. Uh, you'll need that at Druids especially braking now you'll do a tiny bit of trail braking here you'll do it in sort of two reasons for it as well and depends on where you are on the track at Druids you'll do it to try and get a bit of oversteer perhaps at Graham Hill Bend you'll do it to get understeer and stop oversteer it's interesting I'll talk about it when I get to Graham Hill Bend you need to make sure that using the weight to your advantage so weight manipulation that's the same in any car race car road car if you can use the weight to your advantage to get a little bit more turning you've got better lap time so we need to be able to understand that and of course all the techniques I've just spoke about really you know are going to help just improve the overall lap time one technique I won't talk about and I know rank one's used it um, I follow Dan Holland's ghost in this because I wanted to show this ghost as well in in, in the uh, tutorial um, he doesn't use it and that's the handbrake now, yes, previous GT Academies you can talk about things which were a bit extreme, but in reality, the sort of techniques you would still use. Now, the handbrake on this round, the handbrake you can't use in real life, the handbrake you can't use at the national final, no need to use it here, when you could actually use real driving techniques to do real stuff that would happen in the real world, would make me a far better driver than just pressing a button to let the handbrake do it for me you know it's a bit like skid recovery force really you're not going to use it in the real world are you no need to use it so that's the last foot I'm going to talk about the handbrake as I said it's close competition any bit of time you gain at any one point on the lap you're going to gain lots of positions it could be thousands depending on where you are on that leaderboard so let's begin the lap we're going to do slow-mo first and then a full normal speed replay and let's kick it off so, as we approach Paddock Hill Bend and the start finish line, we're going to be sort of in the middle of the track, aiming towards the left. Now, you don't want to be too far to the left, or just in case you're on a good lap, but you're going to start to move over. 
Now I want to pause it in a really good section in just one moment. We'll pause it about here. And as you can see I've just started to come off the throttle. Uh, well you might not be able to see that but I am about to come off the throttle. Now why have I paused it here? Well your brake marker is here. So you see that white line going straight across the track? That is your brake marker. Now you're not going to brake on that, you're going to brake like a couple of meters before that. But because it's constant, it's a very very good visual tool. So you might as well use it. So what you're going to do when you start braking, you're not going to brake 100%. You're only going to brake between 25 and 40. It depends how confident you are really uh, with paddock hill bend. Now paddock hill bend isn't uh, a necessary um, corner sort of to get right just because there's more bigger priority corners but you know if you get it right you sort of start of a good lap it's always psychology really now you need to also make sure with where you are positioned on the track now you'll notice I'm really far to the left now this entire lap is about risk management as well if you're near the top of the leaderboards you're going to be taking full risk using every little millimeter of the track the problem is there's the risk of going on the grass and then actually causing you to oversteer and lose your lap. If you are say rank 5000th, you do not need to take that risk. You want to get consistency first before you start taking risks. Come away from the grass a little bit, make sure you just get your brake markers right, get the sort of apex speeds where you need them right and things like that. So as we go through Paddock Hill Bend, 25-40% to braking initially, you're then going to want to come off. When you come off, you just want to roll a tiny little bit, not too much, you just want a little bit of oversteer. If you get too much, you're going to start to spin off or lose too much speed. Once you get that tiny little bit that you want, you want to go on the throttle. What that's going to do is going to put a little bit of weight back on the rear wheels. Puts a little bit of weight on it, you then control the oversteer. From there, you're just going to accelerate through the corner and then hit the exit curb. Now, you may find that you start to maybe turn in a little too good and maybe about to hit the cones. Just come off the throttle slightly. If you come off the throttle, the car will move over to the left. Just the way the corner is, because it's going downhill and you sort of lose, the car's getting light, it automatically to go to the left. Let's watch that in the works. So as you see, I come off 40% braking, now 25%, 25%, I'm off. There's a little roll, now I'm on the throttle. Start to accelerate, come off slightly, and go back on again. I was very close to the cones there, and now I'm gonna go move towards the exit curb. Now, just as I'm going to pause it here, You'll notice I've not used all the exit curb, I'm quite close to the gravel, there's still a little bit that I can do there just to get a bit more time. Now I, this is sort of risk management again, I've just tried to use the curb to grab me, a bit like uh, on Rome with the curbs, the curbs can be used to grab your car, so sort of make sure it doesn't go into the gravel. If you're really far down the leaderboards, don't take too much risk, but accelerate through. Now apex speeds, I've, I, I forgot to mention that, your apex speed the perfect apex speed would be about 74 miles an hour if you're 72 73 doesn't matter you know this isn't a priority corner 72 73 just make sure you get through it your exit speed so this this curve here is a very very good uh, gives you a very good idea of how well you've done the corner 80 miles an hour perfect 78 79 yeah it's pretty good 77 it's still pretty good you're generally going to be following a ghost so if you're following a ghost and you know the ghost goes ahead of you you've now got an additional guide or aid that you can then use further on in the lap so generally this corner just make sure you get it consistently right rather than focusing on too much risk if you're going for the rank one then you're gonna have to focus the risk so as I exit this corner you're gonna see Dan Holland's ghost suddenly appear as you see I've just hit 80 miles an hour so that's all good there's Dan Holland. So he's about 0 0.04 ahead of me. Now I'm going to pause it for Druids. Now Druids is an important corner and it's one that you need to get right. I've been behind the Ghost and actually caught up to the Ghost at this point. And you'll also see here that I do actually catch up to Dan's Ghost as well. And this corner, quite a lot of the time, most people get wrong, don't understand. Mixture of a million things. So first of all, you don't have to aim for an apex speed here, you can do whatever you want. Why do I say that? Because I've seen people talk about 42 miles an hour apex speed, 41 miles an hour, 40. 
You can do this at 38 miles an hour and still get a very, very, very fast time. Basically, because the way the corner is, you're doing basically 180 degree, you're basically turning around on yourself. Um, but obviously it's a corner. So what you, because it's a front wheel, rear, rear, front wheel drive car, there we go, got it out. <laughs> um, you basically just want to turn the car and go for it. The fact that you aim for a speed and go all hell's bells into that corner is not going to get you any time at all. So the sharper the turn, the better the corner. So that's why apex speed doesn't matter here, it's all about the corner. Um, you'll also uh, notice as well that you don't want to touch the curves because curves push you off. So do be sort of aware of that. So now I'm going to just talk about entering the corner, seeing as we're at the entrance. And you'll notice this white marker on the left hand side, just after the bridge. Don't use the bridge, use this white marker. Now you're going to brake about two or three meters in front of that, basically the length of the car really. And you're going to brake hard, you're going to brake 100%. And you're going to brake very hard, very quickly, and you're going to start to turn into the corner. And you're going to think of this corner as more of a triangle, so straight, straight in, and then as you start to come off, rather than point the triangle, you're going to start to circulate sort of the end of the triangle. So think of the point of the corner. Remember, we were doing sort of a 180 degree turn. So the left hand corner of the triangle and the right hand corner of the triangle are the entrance and exits. We want to get to the, the point, but we want to circulate that point. So to stop fully the point, we're sort of cutting it a little bit. So when we break, and I'm going to just do the first part here, we're going to break at 100% just after that and there we go and we started to turn in so now you've just noticed I'm about to come off the brake it was around 60 miles an hour I start to come off now what I'm doing here now is I'm just gonna let the cars try and oversteer a little bit why do I want the oversteer if I can get around the corner a little bit quicker and point it and squirt it and go a little bit more speed out better corner so if I just watch this now as I go in I'm just managing the braking slightly there I've had to dab it a little bit more now the reason I dabbed it a little bit more is for two reasons. I was going in a little bit too quick to be fair. I just broke a tiny little bit late. It wasn't like meters late, it was literally a tiny tiny bit. Second of all, I wanted a bit of oversteer. I didn't initially get it with any lift off. So the fact that I brake a tiny bit means it puts the weight on the front wheels. Think of when you brake in a car. You brake, everything goes forward, weight on the front wheels. Makes a rear light. If you're turning, that presents oversteer. I don't want too much oversteer. Too much oversteer causes all havoc and chaos. But a tiny bit will give me what I want. Now I've come completely off the brake and I'm not on the throttle. I'll also get a bit of lift off oversteer. And what that allow me to do, if I just play this a little bit more, so I get it a little bit there and then I can accelerate. Now I've accelerated on 40 and you'll notice it's about to drop to 39 miles an hour. And I've done that before the cones. Most people are using these cones as acceleration points. Wrong. Stop doing that. It's rubbish make sure you just get the oversteer you want and you can accelerate out yeah the cones are a good guide you know you can use them as a general idea I should have accelerated by now but if you can get the oversteer that you want just before that the car will get a nice lovely turning angle and you can accelerate out so we'll just watch that now so I went to 39 back to 40 and I'm accelerating out and I do gain time here so do that bear that in mind now on the exits I'm just gonna pause it there don't go all the way onto the curb. This is the only corner where you're not going to use all the exit curb. So we're going downhill now on Druids. Um, so I'm just going to explain this a little bit. We're going downhill. Now if you try and accelerate out really quickly and use all the exit curb, you're not using the full momentum of that downhill section. If you, like, this is this to me is the perfect line where you go around and you keep two wheels on the tarmac. Now I don't keep two wheels on the tarmac because I entered slightly a bit too quickly. If you can keep two wheels on the tarmac and just go for it, uh, you have to use some uh, to get the perfect line, but use too much and you're not going to use the full momentum of the hill. Uh, use too little and you're not going to have enough speed anyway. So the whole idea is you want to turn and just be straight so you can accelerate down the hill. If you're straight rather than on an angle of the hill, you're going to get more speed than if you're trying to just get more speed out the corner. It's a little hard to to explain without sort of doing many many laps to show you the different reasons why but if you think about the uh, downhill uh, think about skiing, skiing's a good example if you go straight down the hill on the jumps for example that's the most speed you can get they don't turn at all unless you're doing the slalom but if you think about the ski jumps they're straight down the hill if they were on an angle and trying to sweep down you're not gonna get you're not gonna get to the bottom fast enough same principle here 
So you just want to get around that corner and go. So I'll just play this now until we get to the line and I'll show you the uh, split time. So at this point we are 1,000th behind Dan and we are on a 23.725. So that just shows you we were further behind than that before Druids, we gained in Druids. So that shows you a 0.6 is possible which is why I personally don't think you need the handbrake. So we're going to approach Graham Hill Bend next and this one is the toughest of the lot in my opinion. And I'm just going to pause it here. So you can see that curbing on the right hand side. Um, basically you're going to want, well depending on the risk management again, I'm going to talk about this a lot, you're going to want to use the curb if you're going high or if you just want consistency don't use the curb. Now the, your start of your braking point is on that curb, it's the start of that curb you will break and then turn in straight away but as you break you want to stay on the throttle why do you say well basically because if you break all the weight goes on the front and as I mentioned at Druids you wanted the oversteer here you don't now on the exit of any corner if you oversteer you're gonna lose throttle speed um, now because um, throttle speed what's that <laughs> acceleration I mean uh, but basically uh, if you on the exit of this corner lose any speed at all and I mean at all you're gonna lose speed all the way down Cooper straight all the way down up to Surtees so what you have to make sure um, that you do on this corner is just get round it as smoothly as possible now that means going on the brake but slightly on the throttle so that the weight is still distributed fairly evenly you'll get understeer because you're asking the wheels to do two different things but it's understeer you want to stop the oversteer. It's actually better to have the understeer here than oversteer. So let's see that happening now. So as I hit that, I hit the curb, I break and turn in. Apex speed, perfect apex speed is 58. I hit 57 there and that slows me down for this corner and that's where I lose the speed. Now at this point you're probably thinking I'm going to hit the cones here. I don't because I'm accelerating out. The understeer that I generated initially is going to keep me going out. Now on the exit of the curb you want to use uh, on the exit of the corner you want to use all the curb so if you see as I exit this corner I'm going to go on to the curb and I use it all do be careful touch the grass and you'll lose a lot more time than you would have gained by just being a little bit more careful on the curb I obviously have to take maximum risk because I'm trying to get rank 1 if you're further down the leaderboard you don't have to take that risk so we're going to accelerate now to Surtees Surtees isn't an important corner, just make sure you don't hit your right hand side wheels on the inside curb. As you can see there, Dan has gained a lot of time from Graham Hill Bend. Graham Hill Bend is one of the most important corners on this entire lap. If you nail it right, you've got a very good lap time on the cards. So as you see there, nothing major at Surtees, just make sure you don't hit your wheels on the curb. We're now at McLaren, and McLaren and Clearways sort of, if you do one good and one bad, um, they affect each other basically or well the line into one affects the other so you'll notice Dan does a different line to me initially gains a bit more time but I gain more time on clearways now clearways is the more important corner of the two the reason being is because you then have Clark curve which you just flat out anyway and then you've got Brabham straight that's all flat there's no you know you're not coming off the throttle braking doing anything else it's all flat if it's all flat it's a big priority corner remember Graham Hill Bend we just lost a temp clearways is the same if you get that corner wrong you're gonna lose all the time down the straight and I said at the start if you gain 0 0.1 mile an hour on any corner you're gonna get more speed by the end of the straight more speed better time better position so I'm gonna take a middle line approach here at McLaren and I'm aiming for the far left hand side at clearways I'm going to use the inside curb as an I as as a marker to lift off oversteer. I want lift off oversteer here. Now I don't get the lift off oversteer I want here. Normally I I I can get it. I don't on this lap. And it does mean that it's not my fastest ever last sector. But you can use the brake as well to get it. Remember we did it at Druids, we used a bit of the brake and then we lift off. Here we lift off, don't get it, we use the brake because we're going in a bit too quick. Now, if you get lift-off oversteer perfect, you don't have to use a brake at all. The lift-off oversteer will slow you down. Imagine the wheels just just screeching along. They're not getting momentum, and then you can go around the corner. So let's watch this in action. So as we see that inside curb, 
we come off and we have no throttle. Notice I never got any turn there. I'm aiming for the left hand side. I broke. And then I've instantly gone on the throttle again because I've got that oversteer. But I don't want it to do it too much. Now, you've got to think of this Nissan Leaf like a go kart. The go karts in Gran Turismo, you do anything too drastic, spin, do all sorts, go crazy. This Nissan Leaf is sort of the same. I've got the oversteer. I go on the throttle. The throttle is the thing that's going to balance the car as best as I can. Throttle precision, application, whatever you want to call it and then balance the throttle. So I've already got the turn in as well now, and you notice Dan's gaining a little bit more time there, but look at the time I'm gaining I took a wider line and that's meant I've gained all this time in clearways, and clearways is more important now, I'm just going to pause it here I need to use more exit curb, because I'm not releasing the steering as much if you don't release the steering, as I said at Graham Hill Bend as I said at the start, precise steering you're going to watch now, I was gaining speed on Dan Dan's going to start accelerating away from me again and that's because he uses all the track I don't use all the track he he get, he get matches me and then accelerates a tiny bit 0 0.01 of a mile an hour whatever you want to call it it's just that tiny little bit that gets you that tiny little bit more time so as we exit clearways look how much more to the left he is I'm still gaining slightly but in a second we're going to start matching each other because we're going to be taking the same line and then he's going to start to accelerate so at this point I'm going to the inside be careful of the grass risk management don't go too close if you're a bit further down the leaderboard it's better to finish a lap than not at all and look at the speed he's got just that tiny little bit more on the exit of clearways it's got me a little bit more speed and he's accelerating ahead towards the finish line that's been a lap of uh, Brands Hatch Indy that was a 1 minute 3.127 uh, it was good enough for rank 7 at the time, it's rank 10 now I believe and as you saw there it's precision, it's tiny little bits that get you the lap time doesn't matter if you fling it into some corners this is another thing by the way, if you do a really good lap and you're really tight there you're not going to get a really good lap afterwards unless you've got a really sort of low lap time then you can there you go, that's the 7th place now I'm just going to pause it there briefly we're going to go into a really fast lap now and I'll just talk through little bits really quickly uh, as we do the fast lap any questions on any of those corners fire away, I'm happy to help I know loads of people have been asking me questions already and they've improved their lap times as well You know, they've asked me a question uh, somebody said the other day about Graham Hill Bend I keep getting oversteer there and I, I mentioned this technique using the brake, staying on the throttle they said they gained two temps it's just like that honestly, any question you you find a corner that you are really struggling on you watch this video you go I still don't get it ask me and I'll happily talk you through it explain it in any way that you find that you can actually learn or adapt yourself and learning those techniques will make you a better driver and when you come to round four you may find a, a use for lift off oversteer or the brake You're getting used to left foot braking properly in the fact that you can do 25% braking and understand where your foot is in relation to the brake and get an advantage so it's literally that easy really just understand each individual corner put it all together voila you got your lap so let's watch that in super speedy mode say super speedy it's normal mode and here we go so stay in the middle initially and then move yourself towards the left we're looking for the first brake marker which is just before the white line 40 to 25 percent braking and then straight onto the throttle a little bit of lift off always there not too much bounce the throttle if you need to use the exit curb as best as you can approach druids use the white marker just after the white marker brake 100 percent come off try and brake enough get a lot of oversteer if you can you know not too much though lift off oversteer use the brake if you need be exit don't you use too much exit curb comes Graham Hill bend use the right hand curb as much as you can turn in don't get oversteer there accelerate through do not touch the grass on the exit you'll lose too much time I lost a temp here that's that's how important that corner is bear that in mind Surtees, it's not really important just get a nice lovely line same with McLaren I aim towards the left hand side of the circuit so I get a better entry into clearways this is where I gain a lot of speed a lot of momentum in that corner I can release the steering I don't release it as much as I should and then I accelerate behind Dan Dan gets better exit at clearways because he releases the steering that's the only reason he starts accelerating again and we approach the line and we get the 1 minute and 3.127 so that's been round 1 GT Academy 2014 as I said, any questions, fire away, and we'll see you at round two on the 5th of May.